All right. Welcome into the scoop presented to you by Johnny T-Shirt and JohnnyT-Shirt.com, part of the Inside Carolina Podcast Network. I'm your host, Ross Martin, joined as always by Don, Donnie Scoops, Callahan. What's up, Don? Not too much. Uh, getting ready for a trip to Atlanta for the Under Armour camp this weekend. Spent last week a couple days in Charlotte. Um, and beyond that, it's been nice because I'm kind of in between seasons for my, my kids, as I know you like to hear. So no more basketball. We're on to lacrosse. And so we're just practicing. First game isn't for a couple weeks. So so not a whole lot of games going on right now. What's what's going on with Ross's world? Will, will your daughter be varsity next year, you think? Is that the plan? That that's the hope. So we'll okay. see. They they lose a lot of seniors. And so so we'll see. We'll see what happens. Nice. Um, you know, not much on my end, you know. Going through this UNC basketball season, they've lost how's five. That, how's that going? Because I, 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 don't, I don't follow it, but I, I kind of – obviously, I see it because I work in South Carolina. So, what's going on there for, for me? They've lost five of the last six. They mm -hmm. lost a tough one on the road at State. Um, they lost at home to Miami, and they have a game tonight. Uh, at Notre Dame. So they have four games left in the regular season and the ACC tournament. And then, you know, they're going to have to win out, I think, and win a couple games in a tournament to make the NCAA tournament. Wow. They could win the ACC tournament, too. That's another way to get in. But it's bleak right now. But this is a football podcast. Let's just get right all back right, on track. All right. This is the 2024 uh, recruiting class preview. Okay. This is the one everyone's been waiting for. Uh, we're gonna is that break true? down. <laughs> I don't know, probably some. We're gonna break down UNC's um, most important targets. You know, most desired targets uh, targets in the 2024 class. It's gonna allow you, the listener, the reader, to become more aware of this class. And look, this is for me. I don't know half these names, so this is kind of when I start getting to know this class as well. Um, so this is a chance you can refer back to this podcast. We're going to break down kind of the names to know, uh, in the 2024 class in terms of UNC football recruiting. Don, how did I do with that intro? Anything you want to add to how, cause you created this list. Yeah. I just want to emphasize, we did names to know because we don't want to make it. We don't want to do the most wanted because then whoever you leave off, we're going to get questions about, um, we wanted it more of like. These are names you're going to be hearing about for the next couple of months. So let's get familiar with them. If you aren't already, this is, this is definitely more for, I think people who don't follow recruiting day to day, but those who follow recruiting day to day, I think you'll get something out of it because we'll talk a little bit about their recruitments as it is right now. So how many names did you put on the list? So, so I get, we'll say a dozen, but we grouped the quarterbacks together just because Quarterback obviously is such an important position, and so and and really, and we'll get into this a little bit more. But um, it's not like prior classes where you had like one quarterback North Carolina was going after, and you knew that was the guy. There's there's about a, a handful, or about four, I guess I should say, that North Carolina is in with, and so we'll we'll touch on each one just to kind of get an idea, just because it's the quarterback position. Got we'll it. break the rules a little bit, and um. We'll get right into it here. A little housekeeping. So we're recording on Wednesday. Uh, the next podcast you listen to will be in two weeks, and we expect to have UNC uh, general manager Patrick Suttis. Mm -hmm. Is that you say his name? Yes. Um, we've had him on before. I think this will be his second appearance. So we'll get him on to, to talk 24 recruiting, to talk changes in UNC's approach to recruiting, Mac Brown, um, anything and everything. We both, uh, you know, have a relationship with with Patrick, so it'll be good to have him on the podcast next week. Um, also, after we go through the most wanted list, we have two off topic um, areas of discussion to keep you listening. Uh, we're going to talk weight loss, uh, <laughs> as I am currently at a weight I don't want to be at, so I am going. I need to get, um, I need to lose some weight. So we'll talk about that, and of course. It's always a challenge for Don. Uh, his weight loss journey is ongoing. And then <laughs> Never we're, also ending. Going, we're also going to um, talk about Don's community service he had to do. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> All right. 
All right, so stay tuned. That'll be at the end. All right, let's get right into it. First, UNC has three commitments right now in the 24 class. Offensive tackle, offensive lineman Desmond Jackson out of uh, Clemens, North Carolina. Linebacker Evan Bennett out of Georgia. And Andrew Rosinski out of Georgia. He's an offensive tackle. All three guys remain unranked. So keep that in mind. UNC has three commitments currently. All right, Don, let's get through your list. I have it pulled up that you sent me. I have their profiles ahead of me. Don is going to name the person. I'm going to go through their bio, and then Don is going to talk about their recruitment and how it relates to UNC and what's kind of going on, and then we'll have any follow-ups. going to try to run through these pretty quickly. Um, there's 15 names I believe we're going to go through. All right, so we'll start out, like I mentioned, the quarterback position. We're grouping these all together. I'll name a name. You, you I guess, uh, give me their um... – Yep. The background. We'll, we'll go all four and then we'll kind of talk about them all together. Does that, that work for you? Sounds good to me. All right. So number one, obviously, Jaden Davis from um, outside from Charlotte, Providence State High School. Yeah. Quarterback, six foot and a half, 192. He is a four star recruit in the 24 7 sports, but in the composite, he's a five star recruit. Uh, we'll go with the composite. He's ranked number 23 nationally and he's number four quarterback and number one player in the state of North Carolina. Um, so this is a high uh, profile national recruit, one of the best quarterbacks in the country, according to 24 seven sports composite. Then we have KJ Jackson. This, this is a quarterback from Alabama, St. James high school. Yep. Six, three, two, 15 KJ Jackson is ranked four Oh two nationally. Uh, the number 28 quarterback, the number 22 player in Alabama, which makes him a 24-7 sports composite recruit. A little bit bigger guy at 6'3", 215, um, of course, from Alabama. And then we have the newest offer, Daniel Keelan, I guess is how you pronounce it, from Nebraska. It's not often North Carolina offers a kid, just a quarterback from Nebraska. Yeah, new name for me, Daniel Keelan, Daniel Kalen, maybe? Kalen? Kalen? I don't right. know. It's a K A E L I N out of Bellevue, Nebraska, 6'2, 198, 24 7 sports composite, three star recruit, 462 in the nation, 33 ranked quarterback, and number three player in Nebraska. And last but not least, Jake Merlinker. He's from Savannah in that small corner of Georgia. There you go. Jake Merlinger. Merlinker. Mark six linger Mark linger six two and a half 195 24 7 sports composite four star recruit number 61 in the nation number seven quarterback and number 11 player in georgia so 61 in the nation and that's a, a big time yeah uh high four star recruit all right don what is going on with these four quarterbacks uh briefly how yeah. unc's <clears throat> quarterback recruiting is going right now so we, we have a couple of different situations here. We've got Jaden Davis, North Carolina, has been recruiting way back since uh, Phil Longo was the offensive coordinator, way back. It was only a few months ago, really. And uh, has, has been his visit North Carolina countless times ever since he was, I think, an eighth, seventh or eighth grader. And then we have K.J. Jackson and Jake uh, Merlinker, who were, Merk Linger, who were offered basically the, the day after um, what's his name was hired. Who's the uh, OCs? I'm going blank. Chip now. Lindsay. Chip Lindsay was hired. Uh, the very next day, he offered both of those guys. He was recruiting both of those guys when he was at UCF. And then with uh, we got to go with Keelan. Kalen. I would go Kalen. Kalen. We'll go. Kalen was offered just recently, a couple weeks ago. I talked to him. Well, I, I, I guess I should say just before the um the end of um January. I talked to him, and he intends on visiting UNC. He has not yet. He doesn't have a visit scheduled. The other three have visited North Carolina at least once. Jackson and, and Davis visit. And actually, all three visit in January. Um, Davis obviously has visited before that. And Merklinger intends on returning to UNC for the um, uh, March 4th basketball game against Duke. The reason why, one of the main reasons why I kind of group these guys together is that UNC can go in a lot of different directions with the quarterback situation. I really think that you, neither one of these looks like, 
a lot of a lot of situations with quarterback, you're like, all right, this guy hasn't committed yet, but he's going to commit to this school. I don't think any of these, I don't feel like, okay, this guy is definitely going to commit to North Carolina, but I could see a scenario play out for any of these guys. So really these, these next upcoming business are going to play a big role in what happens at the quarterback situation. And, and if, I mean, there is the possibility that North Carolina has to kind of offer uh, another guy or two to, to get their, their quarterback for this class. Okay. Of these four, which one do you think is most likely to commit to UNC? It, I mean, it's, 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 it's so hard to say. Okay. It really is. I mean, you look at, you say, okay, well, uh, Merklinger is visiting um, coming up, but I mean, he's a, he's a true national recruit. You know, you know, he has all the offers. George is on him hard. Um, Tennessee's on him hard. All these schools are on him really hard. And he's made a ton of visits all the other, other places. You know, Jax is a kid who has a really strong bond with Chip Lindsey, but he's only visited North Carolina once and he's from Alabama. Yes, UNC has already pulled a quarterback out of Alabama, but that's not something that you can consistently do. And there's a lot of other schools that have been recruiting him a lot longer. Jaden Davis, you know, has visited North Carolina more than any of them by far. But yet everyone's kind of penciling him in for Michigan. Um, but, you know, he when you talk to him, he's great at not showing his card. So you just don't know. And then that uh, Kalen um, is is kind of a wild card because he hasn't even visited and hasn't made a whole lot of recruiting visits at all. So you don't know what direction he's going. Yeah. Can you imagine going to Nebraska for a commitment ceremony? Yeah. Well, I've been to I've been to Kansas for one. I know. I know. So I can't. Nebraska. I, I what a imagine. random state. Yeah. Uh, last commit from the Midwest that area for UNC. From the from Midwest. Area. Yeah. Ooh, I don't know. Jace you... Reuter. Okay. Yeah, Kansas kid. All right. There you go. All right, good stuff there on the quarterbacks. Uh, moving right through, of course, you know, quarterbacks are are very important, as Don stated early in the podcast. So we'll spend more time on them. And and it seems to be pretty intriguing. You know, the other element is is Chip Lindsey. You know, he brought in two guys he had previously offered. He's offered another guy from Nebraska. So he is um, putting his own stamp on this recruitment as he should. Um, okay, next, uh, the next, you just want to go one by one for the next ones? Yeah, so uh, I'll name them and, and you can introduce them. Um, okay. Aiden Banfield from Mill Creek High School, which is in um, Atlanta uh, Metro. Yep, an interior offensive lineman. Of course, 24-7 Sports is now doing, um, I think, the position rankings as interior or as offensive tackles, I believe. He is six foot three, 280, and does not have a ranking. Aiden Banfield. All right, so this is a kid who does have a tie to North Carolina. His mom went to school at UNC, which obviously will help. If you look at the schools that he's considering, uh, Vanderbilt, Georgia Tech, North Carolina, Duke, Wake Forest, those are his top groups. So clearly academics are important for him. His recruitment has just gotten started. Um, he's made, I believe he's visited all those schools, and he intends on visiting them again this spring before kind of proceeding with his recruitment. But UNC is definitely a real threat in this recruitment. Okay. Aiden Banfield, short and sweet and to the point there. Um, man, if a mom goes to Carolina, that's a pretty big uh, pull there. All right, next one. Uh, Khalil Connolly from Christ School, which is in the mountains of North Carolina. Defensive back. All right, Khalil Conley. Yes, Christ School in Arden, North Carolina, really close to Asheville. He is listed as an athlete. You say defensive back, six foot one seventy. He is not ranked, and he has a he has a teammate too, right? Yes, and he's on this list too, Katie okay. Jones. Gotcha. Go ahead. Yeah. So we'll actually have, or we I hope to have more on him in the coming weeks. But he's a guy who. Um, hasn't done a whole lot of visiting yet, uh, but North Carolina is one of the schools he's visited a bunch. And, um, you know, despite, I mean, you know, Ar Arden is, is like, what, four hours away-ish, maybe a little bit more than that. But um, he's also mm -hmm. visited NC State and Wake Forest. Um, and, uh, I mean, he's a guy that Charlton Warren likes a lot. So um, getting him back on campus is going to be, is definitely the goal for for um, North Carolina in the, in the coming weeks once the dead period ends. Okay. Now, with your Christ School recruits, I have an in there at that okay. school. 
Okay. This is, this is I've given a shout out multiple times. Jeff Joyce, who was a classmate of mine at UNC, he is a podcast listener. He is he loves a scoop. He is a Don Callahan fan, much like <laughs> much like well, Wayne, so much like Wayne House. He loves the allure of Don Callahan. So, um, I I I guess this this won't be out there. I can give it away. I I I am working on stopping by Christ School. In the he, next few he, days, he is waiting for you. Okay, all right. I'm just I'm waiting for Coach Walker to call me back. <laughs> and Coach Walker's awesome, and he always gets back to me. And so, um, I know he's a busy guy. He has other things uh, better to do than, than talk to me. But he he always gets back to me. So yeah. So my my intentions are to go by there. Dude, I would love to go up there with you. We could stay at my my cabin. <laughs> could we could we hunt salamanders? Yeah, it have to be springtime. Uh-huh. Um. But uh, spring or summer. But yeah, I mean, I know that area very well. Asheville, oh, look. the area. I got buddies up there. Did he text you back right now? He literally just texted me back. Let me see got if I can. Call him. Get him on the air. Don't give away his number. It Stop. doesn't say his number. It just says yes. Okay. Let me just. This is Don at work. You know, the grind <laughs> never stops when you cover recruiting. Um, but UNC is going after two Christ school recruits. And shout out to UNC alum. Uh, Jeff Joyce, who is currently employed at Christ. Yeah, so maybe maybe we need to. Um... You got to meet Jeff if you go there. Yeah, yeah, maybe we can get it all set up. I'm sure all the other listeners besides Jeff are like hating this uh, segment. <laughs> okay, moving on. Ready? Yep. All right. So next guy is um, a guy that we actually ran a story on earlier this week. Javaris Green, slot receiver from Sh- uh, from Crest. Crest High School. Can't say, don't want to say Shelby. Crest High School. Yep. Uh, 5'10", 190, and he is ranked as the 95th wide receiver by 24-7 sports. He does not have a composite ranking. Of course, Shelby, a very popular area. A lot of talent comes out of that um, county in that town uh, right there, kind of west of Charlotte. Yeah. So, I mean, he's a guy that UNC actually just offered – I think it was on the, yes, it was the 31st. It was the final day, or it was the final day before the February dead period began. And um, he, he came up there for a visit. And it, that was, it was all kind of part of it. UNC had made an evaluation visit prior to that and uh, wanted, wanted to get him up to, to campus to offer him a person. They were able to do that. And UNC is definitely, he's, he's pretty wide open right now. I think a lot of the schools that he's really interested in have just recently offered him, although he's had some offers for a while. This is a kid who actually was a was a baseball kid growing up, even though his dad is Willie Green, who spent a few seasons in the NFL, won two Super Bowls. Um, Javaris didn't begin playing or didn't really con- seriously consider the sport until um, really his sophomore season, but uh, has been a starter at, at Crest High School for, will be a four-year starter at Crest High School, which is one of the, you know, which is historically a, a football powerhouse in state. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I mean, I mean, this is a kid that UNC really likes at that slot receiver position. And, and he mentioned that when he visited that Lonnie Galloway compared him a lot to uh, Josh Downs. There you go. Javaris Green. All right, next one. Keenan Jackson from, I guess we'll say, we'll say Union County, which is outside of Charlotte. This is Cupperson High School wide receiver. Who was visiting North Carolina a bunch? Yep, Keenan Jackson, Waxhall, 6'3", 185 for so a pretty tall, well bit built receiver in the twenty four seven Sports Composite ranking. He is a three star, four ninety nine nas- nationally, sixty fifth ranked wide receiver, and the number thirteenth think thirteenth ranked player in the state of North Carolina. Yeah, so this is a kid who has, you know, he was kind of funny about it where he said, "Hey, look." I'm not going to name my favorites yet, but if you just look at all the schools I've visited, it's pretty obvious you know, what schools I'm leaning towards. So let me just, I'm, I'm pulling it up now. Um, his, the schools he has visited in the fall, I visited Duke, NC State, Tennessee, Virginia Tech, West Virginia. And then in January, he visited North Carolina, and he also visited North Carolina twice. Um, and then in January, he visited North Carolina, Duke, NC State, Virginia Tech. And I think it's pretty obvious those schools that I guess what we're talking about, North Carolina's and um, Virginia and in Tennessee, th- that area is the schools that he's focusing in on. His mom and a lot of his 
other family members are UNC graduates, which, which obviously helps. But um, he definitely tries to downplay that connection. And he's, he's one of those ones that, that wants to kind of reveal his information on his own time. And as I said, he plans on coming out with a top schools list, I think, in, in a month or so. How many wide receivers is UNC taking in this class? So the so I, I think they would like to take three. But if they're in a situation where they can take, you know, four really good ones that they really like, they'll do that. So, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I know everyone looks at how many offers are out there, but I think that North Carolina kind of feels like they like a lot of these guys a lot and they'll be happy with any of them sort of thing. I mean, obviously there is some sort of preference for different guys, but for the most part, it's like, okay, here are, I don't know. I don't know how many they've offered, but let's say, let's say 10, you're a 10, give us three of them and we'll be happy sort of thing. Um, and also remember that transfer portal, you know, completely changed the game. You miss out on a recruit, you know, you add it in the transfer portal. You, you, you someone leaves, you add someone to the transfer portal. So it kind of changes your approach to numbers. Um, okay. Next one. Yeah. So, um, the one thing I'll say with, with that is such a good year, particularly in this area for wide receivers, the Carolinas and Virginia have a ton of top wide receivers. So I think really the UNC is not looking portal at all. They're looking at trying to get some of these top receivers. So, um, anyway, um, so this is going back to Christ school mm. with, uh, uh, Caden Jones, linebacker from that, uh, that school j just outside of Asheville. Yep. Christ school outside Asheville, six, four, two Oh five pound linebacker, uh, 24, seven sports composite four star recruit, uh, one thirty seven in the nation, number 12 ranked linebacker, number three player in North Carolina. And you look at his offer list, um, Alabama, Kentucky, uh, as I click to expand it, Louisville, Michigan, Michigan State, Notre Dame, Oklahoma, Ole Miss. So Syracuse, South Carolina, USC, Virginia, Virginia Tech. So definitely a national recruitment. Caden Jones. Yeah. So as you mentioned, I mean, I mean, this is a kid who has legitimately made some visits to the West Coast sort of thing. So a lot of kids say, oh, I want to visit Oregon. I want to visit USC. I want to visit all these other schools and end up not making those visits. This is a kid who has already done those sort of things. Alabama was a big one. I mean, it's a big one for everyone. But if you remember, I ran a story with him, um, uh, uh, I guess, in January. And he actually said, hey, I have this Alabama visit. If Alabama offers me during this visit, that's a game changer. That all happened. And so, um, so yeah, so it um, – sorry, I'm getting text and it's kind of um, knocking my train off. But, um, yeah, so – I'm, as I mentioned, I'm going to go see him. I, I like to kind of talk to him, spend some time with him, and kind of get you know get a feel for how how much of an impact that offer truly was. But yes, I mean he's been North Carolina a couple times. His brother graduated from UNC, so that always helps. Mm -hmm. You know, and not not only did his brother graduate, his brother, um, you, know, Caden, uh, kind of looks at him like, okay, this is what he's doing with his life with his UNC degree, and I think that's that's good for uh, UNC. Now, Christ School is a boarding school. Do you know where Caden is from originally? So I believe Caden is one of the few who aren't um, – don't live on campus, I think, if I remember correctly. Okay, so he's a – It is uh, a boarding school, but not not everybody um, lives on campus. So he's from the Asheville area? Yes, yes. Okay. All right, next up, Luke Masterson. Sorry, go ahead. You're up. Oh, sorry. Um, yes, Luke Masterson. From uh, offensive lineman from uh, a private school in Nashville, Franklin yeah. Road Academy. Yeah, I used to live in Nashville. You did. How was it? What, 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 tell me about Nashville. I worked for 24-7 Sports after teaching for one year. It was good. Party town, is it, man. Is it? Party town. It's big. It's growing. And, you know, it's it's um, it's a big time, big time city. I mean, it's huge. You know, it's music, country music capital of the world. So you got tons of entertainment, tons of music, that kind of stuff, flashy stuff downtown. Um, yeah. Okay. Any questions? Um, it is a town I've never visited, and I really want to visit. 
So yeah. take the wife there for a weekend. Okay, I'll have to do that. I mean, as you go to the bars downtown, and there's a, there's so, a, so it's not so, is that family friendly? I mean, I guess it, I'm sure every place could be, but it's yeah, more of a yeah. I mean, it's it's, it's a very uh, very much of a party town. You can of course there's stuff to do for families, but um, it's very much like go listen to music downtown, party, drink. Uh, like every bar has live music, like starting at noon every day. Mm-hmm. Like you walk down there on a on a Wednesday, there's gonna be music playing from from most of the bars. Okay. Um, there's a country music hall of fame. You know, they have a hockey team, they have a pro football team. Um, there's a lot going on, and I'm sure. Yeah, it's I do. I cannot. I cannot stand country music. I can listen. I really can listen to any type of music. I have my preferences, obviously, but the one like my wife would put it on, and it literally like gets me mad. <laughs> so, is this yeah. like the live music? Is it all country? Oh, uh, yeah, country or country, you know, folk or country rock or classic rock. You know, it's the country music capital of the world. Okay. That's the one thing that's you don't strike me much as a music guy in general. I, uh, in my old age, I have not. Uh, but I mean, there's certain times you throw it on. You know what I mean? So there's only so much time to consume, you know, content that's, you know, strictly right. Philly, Phillies and Flyers. That's right. All right. Luke Masterson, six foot six, two seventy five from Franklin Road Academy in Nashville. He is unranked at this time. Holds off from North Carolina, Cincinnati, Colorado, Appalachian State. Um, you know, pretty extensive offer list. Um yep, go ahead. Yeah, so this is another kid who his father went to law school at UNC and during that time, um, his this is before Luke was born. His father and mother lived in Chapel Hill for for a couple of years, and that really has kind of you know helps UNC because obviously they're comfortable with the area. He's another one who, I mean, he's he's not playing games with his recruitment. He already has a top five: Vanderbilt, Georgia Tech, Wake Forest, Duke, and North Carolina. He intends on revisiting those schools. He has visited each of those schools at least once. And a few of them, I can't remember. I know North Carolina and I think Vanderbilt and Duke were the ones in the. Let me pull this up. Uh, I, just, I don't want to. I guess it doesn't matter. Um, he's visited all five and he plans on revisiting all five in the spring and then uh, figuring out does he want to take official visits to all five, cut it down a little bit more, and then from there make his decision. Okay. Luke Masterson. Good name there. I like the name Luke. Yeah. All right, moving on. If we have a child, we'll name it Luke. You and I. Okay. Go ahead. All right. Next guy everyone should be familiar with. Jonathan Paler. He is a athlete, running back, wide receiver, return man, track star from Burlington Cummings High School. If you follow, if you even follow a little bit, you know Cummings High School in Burlington. There you go. He is five foot nine, one seventy. He is a twenty four seven sports composite four star recruit, one hundred one overall, the eleventh ranked athlete, and the number two ranked player in the state behind, um, the uh, Jaden Davis out of out of Charlotte. Yeah. So he has taken a very methodical approach to his recruitment. He has come out with. I know people. Some people don't like the whole top schools list. And sometimes they drive me a little crazy. I like them because it helps to keep a little, you know, stay a little bit organized on some of these kids. Mm-hmm. It does drive you batty when they come out at the top eight and they say, but my recruitment is still open. Anyway, um, Paler, I think, initially had like a top 20, I think it was. And then he cut it down, I think, to a 16. And then he's currently at a 10. And he's looking to get that down even further than that. Closer to five, but I don't think he's going to get to a five. And he's already promised North Carolina is going to be in that next group. Um, but really, you know, for him, you know, he just likes to, to – he, he's a very meticulous kid, and this is like how he likes to do his recruitment, and I'm cool with it. But if you really kind of follow the visits and just, you know, where he's gone – He's visited NC State a bunch. He's visited Clemson a bunch. He's visited South Carolina a bunch. He's visited North Carolina a bunch. Uh, he's made a couple of visits to Tennessee and Maryland. So clearly, those are the schools that are really in it. And really, it's you know Clemson, NC State, South Carolina, North Carolina, 
And then there was actually a report that came out that said that that will quoted him as saying South Carolina was his leader, which I know some people wanted to, to um, you know, discount the report. I, mm. I mean, it would not it would not surprise me if that was legit. I mean, South Carolina is doing really, really well on the recruiting trail. And um, I could see that being a school that Paler would like. But Why? See, um, just because he, he likes he likes attention. Um, I think the so I think location, even though he downplays it from everyone I've spoken to around him, location is going to be more of a factor for him than um, what he says. And if you look at his visits, it's obvious. I mean, none of these schools, all the schools I mentioned are within what, like a, like a decent driving range. And so South Carolina obviously fits that. I think he likes the allure of the SEC. Obviously, mm-hmm. South Carolina is in there. South Carolina has the buzz now. You know, I you know I know that a lot of UNC fans are like, why would anyone want to go to South Carolina? I mean, South Carolina has a lot of a lot of um, has a couple of blue chip commits already for this class. So so they're actually having a good good recruiting season so far. Um, I mean, this is just a guy like this when he's so close to you, you know, thirty minutes away mm-hmm. from Chapel Hill. It's the big miss, man. It's those are the guys you gotta keep. We, we always say it, but yeah, well, no it, one's it, saying that he's left yet. Yeah, so, it, I, yeah, I don't want anyone to get mad at me. I'm not saying. I mean, he he definitely could easily end up in North Carolina, uh, but I but I'm just saying that there is a report where he is quoted saying that South Carolina is his leader, and I think yeah. another one kind of followed that up. Do you have a time frame on on when he wants to make an announcement? Did you say that? Yeah. So he's he's a, a kid. You know, going with that methodical approach, he's going to take his official mm-hmm. visits and then just then announce in the summer okay. after there's officials. Yeah, so if you look at his uh, profile, his South Carolina is listed as the favorite on his profile. Then it's Alabama, Clemson State, and North Carolina is listed as warm um, the designation there. All right, Jonathan Paler, uh, very talented kid out of Burlington, North Carolina. All right, next up. Next up is a guy who actually came out with his top schools list. Um, we'll get to that in a second, but let me introduce Jordan Ship, wide receiver from Providence Day School in Charlotte. He is one of. Uh, Jaden Davis is, um, I guess, uh, highly ranked wide receivers. 6'2", 195, 24-7 sports composite, three-star recruit, but a high three-star, 402 nationally, number 55 ranked wide receiver, number 10th ranked player in the state of North Carolina. Um, He has Michigan and North Carolina listed as warm on his profile uh, with a bunch of other offers as well. Yeah, so as I mentioned, he came out with his uh, top eight, which are Georgia Tech, North Carolina, NC State, Kentucky, Maryland, Cincinnati, Michigan, and Virginia Tech. You know, the, the one school here he's always connected to is uh, Michigan a lot, and some of that is because of there's this talk of this package deal with the Providence Day School kids with Jaden Davis. We mentioned him earlier. Jordan Ship and Channing Goodwin, who has uh, connections to to um, the Michigan program, um, so that kind of plays into that. Uh, but uh, you know, North Carolina is in this, so is NC State, so are the other schools. He's visited North Carolina a few times. This is a kid. <clears throat> if you follow what I write, and hopefully you do, um, this is a kid I've loved for a very long time um, because tremendous ball skills, plays huge. Um, you know great hands. I mean, great anticipation. I mean, all that sort of stuff and plays with a tri- chip on his shoulder. L- I love that sort of stuff. I mean, I've every practice I've gone to, he's always angry. He's always angry about something. And, and I love the, the way he plays. All right. Jordan ship out of Providence day high school in Charlotte, North Carolina. All right. Next up is another wide receiver. Yeah. Another name that you should know by now, but we're going to bring him up. Alex Taylor wide receiver out of, Grimsley Grimsley. High School. Grimsley High School. You don't have the other guy on there either, do you? Well, we had to do, we had to limit this. So I, I, you know, I mean, what's what's the other guy's name? Terrell Anderson. Terrell Anderson, yep. So um, I'm not a big fan of Terrell Anderson. I just want to, you know, I don't know. That's the thing about the whole nicknames no thing. You know, I I know. It's hard to break it down to only 10, and we end up doing 15. Yes, yes. Yeah, I had to cheat a lot. So anyway. I'll let you introduce uh, Alex Taylor. All right, Alex Taylor from uh, Greensboro Grimsley High School, six foot two, one seventy five, 
a 24-7 sports composite four-star recruit, 305 nationally, 44-ranked wide receiver, and the eighth-ranked player in the state of North Carolina. He has Cincinnati, Clemson State, North Carolina, and Penn State as his warm schools, which is odd. Tennessee also in there, and Virginia Tech. I don't know why Cincinnati's in there, but a bunch of schools are listed as warm. You know, anyone can change these on his profile to what it is. You never know where these are coming from. Yeah, so um, I think the thing is, is you got to remember, these kids' sports lives are, what, the last five years, if not less. And so Cincinnati has been a good program, has been this program that played in, played in the playoff. And so, but yes, there has been a surprising amount of buzz with kids this class, with Cincinnati. I don't know if it has to do with the fact that Cincinnati is moving up to a Power 5 conference or not, but um, but new yeah. Coach, new coach there, too. Yeah, new coach, which is actually surprising. I feel like if, um, as what's the name was still there, then that would make a little bit more sense. But anyway, um, yeah, so this is another kid who has made a ton of visits to North Carolina, a ton of visits to Clemson, a ton of visits to NC State, and I mean, those, I mean, really, yeah, during the football season, he made one, two, three, is that four visits to North? Yeah, one, two, three, four visits to North Carolina, three visits to NC State, two visits to Clemson, hmm. also visited Virginia Tech, Duke, and then in January, visit North Carolina, Clemson, and NC State. Has already plans on returning to UNC for the Duke basketball game on March 4th. So UNC is definitely a serious player here, but um, Clemson NC state are, are definitely putting up quite a fight. And a lot of people think Clemson might be actually the team to beat here, but um, so we just have to see how this thing kind of, kind of plays out with him. All right. Alex Taylor from Grimsley. Next up. Next up, we have Hank Weber from another, another, well, this is, this is uh Brentwood, Tennessee. Brentwood Academy. You know, that's that's where 24-7 sports headquarters were when I worked there. Where are they at now? It's downtown Nashville. Ah, gotcha. They moved downtown, I, th- uh, I think, after the CBS merger, a couple of years after the CBS merger, because I think CBS or whoever owns kind of CBS, they have a something else down there that they kind of just use the same building. Gotcha. Okay. Introduce us to Hank Weber, please. Yeah, Hank. You don't hear that name very often. Um, that will be our second child's name. Brentwood Academy in Brentwood, Tennessee, which is a suburb of Nashville, six foot four, two thirty, uh, twenty four seven sports composite three star recruit, six sixty in the nation, fifty nine ranked defensive lineman, and twenty four ranked ranked player in Tennessee. Now, this is the only defensive lineman you have on your top fifteen most uh, names to know. Yeah, and maybe that's more of the conversation than anything. I wanted to make sure that every position was um, represented. And I believe I was able to do that. And I had to make a decision with D line. I mean, I could have went with heaven Brown Schuler, but he's a national kid. He's visiting North Carolina a bunch, but he's a national kid who probably is going to end up somewhere else. Uh, and then there's a couple guys like Deandre cook and Cole Mullins and, um, uh, try to say, um, you know, Solomon Williams, who are guys who were recently offered, who intend on visiting North Carolina next month. I just went with Hank Weber just because he's already visited UNC a couple of times, actually. Um, you know, he camped at UNC, which is when he was offered. You know, he has also visited uh, Mississippi State, Ole Miss, Tennessee, Wisconsin, Auburn, and West Virginia. He can go in a lot of different directions with his recruitment, but he's, he's made more than one visit to Chapel Hill. So I think that's significant for, at this point. There you go. Um, I think UNC had a, a lineman from Brentwood recently too, right? Uh, Eli Sutton? Yes, Eli Sutton. Yep. Was he and, from Brentwood Academy? I think so. Yeah. I should know that. But the, some of the Brentwood – because there's what? There's a Brentwood Academy and there's a Brentwood a High School? A bunch yeah. of high schools. Yeah, he went – yeah. Eli Sutton's from Brentwood Academy. Okay. Um, a bunch of private schools around that area as well. And so he knows of, and that's, oh, so, so he knows of Eli. Um, but the real, the guy who actually has the bigger connection is Luke Masterson. His sister, his older sister is close friends with Eli to the point where Eli comes over his house and was actually at his house 
a couple weeks before North Carolina had offered Luke. But anyway. Hey, guys, that's the kind of reporting and insight you don't get anywhere else. Well, if Don, I was – Don was... knows – Don knows who's going to whose house in high school in Nashville, Tennessee. Well, if I was really good at my job, I would have mentioned that when we talked about Luke Masterson. Now everyone's their heads all scrambling. I'm just throwing all these names at them and everything. There you go. All right, Hank Weber. All right, last one. You ready, Don? I am ready. All right. And this is a guy who actually is kind of sort of in my neighborhood. Whoa. Malcolm Ziegler from Fuquay Verena High School. Which All is right. a stone's throw from my my the my man tower, really. <laughs> I could hit his high school from the window. What town do you live in? I live in Holly Springs. But I live Springs. basically you come out of my neighborhood and you make a right, you'll see a sign that says welcome to Fuquay Verena. Yep. I've been there when I went to get the biscuits from uh Bojangles. I had to go back and forth to Raleigh suburbs. All <laughs> right. Uh safety six foot two, one ninety eight from Fuquay Verena. Uh, high school in Fuquay Verena. What a weird name for an area. Um, and he's unranked right now. Yes, I, I I fully anticipate that to change. His recruitment has just blown up in the past month. I mean, you you Virginia offered UNC. Um, you know, I'm just going to list his offers recently. Uh, Penn State, West Virginia, Virginia Tech, South Carolina. Uh, and then, you know, Virginia, um, North Carolina, obviously Duke, Vanderbilt, um, Maryland. I mean, these are all within the past few weeks. This is a kid, a track kid, tall, long, looks the part. Um, and my, my connection with him, just because my kids kind of, you know, they're in the, the, the rec leagues are in, you know, the different athletic programs. I know, like, I think my son knows him. There's a lot of people who Uh-oh. I know might, who know might not him be a good me. thing. Well, no, my, my son doesn't hang out with him, but um, <laughs> so, so we don't have to worry about Malcolm. Um, but no, good kid, a uh, good program over there. His recruitment is just getting started. You know, even when I, I actually went by there and spent some time with him and his coach, he had somewhat of a plan since then he's added a bunch of offers. So I imagine that plan has, will need to be altered a little bit. So, you know, where he visits is going to be telling. But North Carolina is definitely a school that it seemed like made an impression on him because uh, academics are important and he respects the football program. <laughs> there you go. Malcolm Ziegler. I went to high school with a guy named Daniel Ziegler. Mm. He was wild. You we went through this whole list and you didn't read the ads. I know. We're going to do it right, right next. I got to tease people with what's coming up next. Okay. So next up, we're going to talk about Don doing community service, and we're going to talk about uh, weight loss, fitness, health, nutrition coming up. Off-topic discussion on the scoop. Don, how did that go? How did you think that went? Good. Why don't we? Why don't you read your ads, and then we'll talk about how it went. Okay. All right. And this podcast, of course, is brought to you by Johnny T-Shirt and JohnnyT-Shirt.com, the one-stop shop for all your – UNC apparel needs baseball season. Actually went to the baseball game on Friday and yesterday, uh, Tuesday afternoon, to get your baseball jerseys for your darties, your uh, basketball jerseys, T-shirts, sweatshirts, hats, anything you need. Johnny T-shirt and Johnny T-shirt.com. Tell them Inside Carolina sent you. Of course, all Inside Carolina subscribers get ten percent off with the code found on the premium message boards, Tar Pit and UNC basketball. So a little bonus there for those who subscribe. Um, and a benefit there for those who listen. Johnny T-Shirt and JohnnyT-Shirt.com. Online, great customer service, independently owned, uh, alumni owned. It's a great company to support uh, as we try to support um, independent and, and locally owned companies. A couple of national ads, and we'll be back with more of The Scoop um, here on the Inside Carolina Podcast Network. And we're back. Don, what's up? Not too much. What did you think of are, I guess, 12 names to know or 15 names to know. Well, I'm more informed. I It's, you know, it's tough. You, there's so many names and, you know, it's not the most exciting, you know, uh, type of podcast, but it's a necessary one because as these recruitments develop, they become more exciting. You know, where's Jonathan Paler going to go? Where's Jaden Davis going to go? Um, where are these big recruits are going? So you have to start somewhere. 
um, getting to know these players from a name basis as the recruitments develop. Um, you know, it's hard. It's hard to project. Like it, now, as we enter in spring and summer, is when you kind of get to know these names because they're starting to mm-hmm. narrow it down. They're starting to make official visits, and they're coming to make decisions. So I think as the um, seasons change, and as the uh, calendar moves, you um, you know that's when you start to get these you know these names. It was hard to kind of worry about twenty four, you know, six months ago. Yeah, which, which you're probably already starting on twenty five. Yeah, yeah. No, we have a list of twenty fives. Um, we don't want to get into that list yet. <laughs> Not on the podcast, at least. Yeah. Um, how many of those names did you recognize before? Good question. Pull it up here. Don <laughs> Callahan on Slack. Or he X'd all the names. Okay. I knew three of the quarterbacks. Recognized three of the quarterbacks. Okay. I'm not sure I would have. I don't know if I would be able, if you had said, who are the three quarterbacks that you see going after? I'm not sure I'd be able to name all three, but I recognized three out of the four. Okay. Uh, you know, I recognized the two Christ school kids. Okay. Um, And then I recognized Alex Taylor and Jordan Ship. So one, two, three, four. And then the three quarterbacks. Okay. And then you know I you know I saw Luke Masters' name in the article you wrote. Mm-hmm. Um, that's about it. Jordan Ship, I've seen his name before. Okay. Yeah, not a you know, it, it doesn't seem like that strong of an in-state class. No, and that's um, and that's kind of part of the problem too. You know, it's it's I think it will be better than it has been the past two years, but it's just been such a fall a a a, a high fall since that 2021 class which was the best class of the internet era yeah. and so you know which kinda has been back, tough kind of back to the mean yeah right right yeah um I'm trying to pull up who can i pull up and pull up the um <laughs> that radio the, the the north carolina state rankings it's kind of hard to find sometimes um, yeah you have Jaden davis number one Jack Larson already commits to Notre Dame. Tied in. Makes sense. Goes to Charlotte Catholic. Uh, Jonathan Paler, Channing Godwin. Oh, it's Providence Dude, Day, man. They must be super talented, huh? Yeah. I, they, what, we, what, he's ranked number four in the state? Four in the state, yeah. Yeah, that's tough. Um, <laughs> I don't even think he's the best wide receiver on his team. I mean, he's a great kid, and he's a good player, but some of these rankings – yeah, uh, Alex Taylor, Caden Jones, Micah Gilbert out of Charlotte, Charlotte Christian. He's another one who I almost had in this list, and I kind of threw off just so we can, you know, it means guys visit North Carolina a bunch, visit a lot of schools, has has some NFL um, ties, you know, with his dad, his dad and his his uncle and mm-hmm. his brother. His brother is Mark Gilbert, who plays in the NFL, played at Duke. Yeah, um, you know, who's his brother? Mark Gilbert. Yeah, yeah, DB. Yep. Ethan Callaway, Jordan Ship, Triton Cloud, Danaz White. Yeah. All right. That's enough. Um, uh, let's move on. Okay. Which topic do you want to touch on first? Let's do the weight loss. Cause I want to know about what, what has happened with you to get you out of, you know, you're <laughs> usually, you usually have, you know, your six pack and uh-uh. pectorials and all that sort of stuff ready to go all, at all times. So what's okay, going on? So I am 231 right now. Okay. Which is the highest I've been in a while. And I don't know why. <laughs> so, all right, let's go back. Old you age. Know, you know, I tore my pec, right? Yes. So I tore my pec and had surgery in, I tore it on June, July 2nd and had surgery like July 22nd or something like that. And then, so obviously I was, you know, wasn't able to exercise. I walked a bunch, but I wasn't able to really do much um, for three, four months. Mm-hmm. So I got back into running November, December. Um, so I've been running more and running. I don't think is the best way to lose weight way to lose. It's it, it. You could can. Can you hear me? Microphones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I don't think running is the best way to lose weight. I think weight training, combining that with some cardio. I think walking is walking every day is a great way to, if you you know need to lose some weight, but uh, I run a lot. But I still can't really lift much, and I'm not. I don't really go to a gym, so all my workouts are body weight. But that juice cleanse, remember that juice cleanse? Mm-hmm. Backfired. Whoa! So uh, I lost weight on the juice cleanse, and I got down to two. I have it behind me, actually, I got down to like two twenty. So I lost like 
eight pounds. Okay. Um, I was tracking. You can see that I was tracking my weight. Okay. And then Instagram targeted me with all these like fatty foods and like all these recipes and all these things because I was craving it so much. And I was going. I was craving all these different foods. And then right around the NFL playoffs and Super Bowl, I was cooking a bunch of these like. I mean, I was cooking uh, buffalo chicken dip, <laughs> buffalo bombs. I made cinnamon rolls. I mean, I would cook all this food because I was just craving all this stuff. I made all this different slop food. Um, and then I just put on some weight, I guess. And then Super Bowl happened and you eat a bunch. And then um, just been, haven't been eating as healthy as I would like. It's tough to eat healthy. It's yeah. easy, easy to eat slop. Uh, so it's all, I mean, weight loss is all in the kitchen. I mean, you can work out every, cause I work out a lot. I work out, I mean, I've worked out every morning this week. Sometimes I do a run in the afternoon. So, you know, consistently running, consistently working out. And if you don't eat well, it won't make a difference. So it's all kitchen. I got to get on a better plan of, of eating a little bit less portions and more fruits and vegetables and less carbs. I mean, it's carbs, carbs kill me. I love carbs. Everyone loves carbs. Yeah, no, I mean, that's my biggest problem is, is like, I would really, in the, in the perfect scenario for getting about what it would do to my body, I'd love to just lay on the couch, eat donuts with my belly hanging out like all day long. You know what I mean? Uh, put that on a quote card. Yeah. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, I mean, I I'm actually I actually weigh less than you now. So, well, how much do you weigh? Like two twenty five. Yeah. How tall are you? Six about six foot. Yeah. 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 So, um, um, but I mean, so the, the only thing I have consistent is, uh, I take my daughter to, she goes lift and because we, we do planet fitness and she has the black card or whatever. So I go, I'm her guest quote unquote. Um, and then I just go hop on the bike and I do my 20 minutes, five miles and 20 minutes sort of thing. So I get that three times a week. It's great. I, I need to do, um, I try to walk on the other days. I just, don't end up doing that which is the problem or if i walk so i walk with my wife and it's like she's she's done after five minutes and i'm like dude this is not gonna do well we need to walk more than this but does your wife work from home she does so y'all around y'all around each other all day yeah yeah but you're up in the man tower do you work up the mount man tower so it differs so um i might work up in the man tower today I don't know. But I mean, there's so, I mean, d did I tell you about my, um, well, don't kidding you by you're done working after this. No, I got, <laughs> well, um, I got, I still have to do my stuff for today and then I got to do my stuff for tomorrow because we're, we'll get into my community service. But anyway, <laughs> did I tell you about my, and this is, this is, this is another reason why I'm fat, but did I tell you about what my, one of my Christmas gifts were that I requested? No, I <laughs> donuts. No, no. Um, so I work in bed, right? Um, you know, at night, you know, just get, you know, work on stuff or whatever. Um, so I requested one of those hospital table things that yeah. they for they feed people, yeah. and so so, so I work. got it so I could work, right? So what has happened though is some days I'm like, I just pull I just pull the the, the <laughs> desk over and I'm just, I'm just working, and the next thing I know, my daughter comes home from school, and she's like. Have you left bed? And I'm like, yeah, I had to go to the bathroom, you know. <laughs> but um, so yeah, so that doesn't help. Oh my which, gosh, which made it worse. But yeah, so I mean, I, some days I work on the man tower, some days I work in bed, some days I work um, downstairs on the couch. She has an office. Well, yeah, as you know, she has an she office. She has an office. So yeah, it was my office, but I lost that. Um, but you ever uh, work at go work at a coffee shop or anything? Starbucks when, or I, when I'm home to... or on the road on the road I do it all the time at home not really yeah um on the road I do it all the time so I yeah I gotta I'm... I have a suggestion for you okay you should wake up and walk go walk two miles every morning it would transform your life okay it's so healthy watch I the used... sunrise there was a point where I did that it's just it... my see I have all these problems one of them is sleep come the excuses Last night, I could not. I could not fall asleep. I didn't go to sleep until like two o'clock. I'm such a night person, yeah. but now I can sleep in the morning like you wouldn't believe. But I do <laughs> make myself to get get up at six thirty, because if I don't, then you know, the house yeah, just. I mean, burns working out. out in the morning, I think is it 
it just jump starts you. I mean, yeah. I get. I mean, I just I'm so much more productive. I'll start working at seven thirty sometimes. You know, this is not every day. Seven thirty, and then until about ten or eleven, you know, just you get you can get so much done. You've almost worked, you know, seven to eleven. That's four hours right there. You know, you are kind of halfway your day is done, lunch, and then a couple more hours you're done. Um, and working out in the morning, it just jump starts your metabolism, mm-hmm. wakes you up, so you're mm-hmm. more productive and ready to go. Shower, you kind of touch the day. And I've heard that getting the sun on you early in the morning, like as the sun rises, kind of waking up with the sun, it, it helps your circadian rhythm, mm. which which regulates your Sounds body. Sounds kinky. <laughs> Regulates your body's internal clock, which helps you sleep better throughout the day or, or at nighttime because you're kind of going as the day goes. Maybe that's what I will start to do. Um, I I can't. I gotta. I don't know when I can start it because I got this trip coming up. Um, wake up at uh, wake up at, at six and and walk two miles, and you'll be done by six thirty. Okay. <laughs> okay. I can walk. You know, I'm a slow, slow runner, so I run with a running group. Uh-huh. And I'm the slowest. I mean, I'm the slowest. I've been the slowest for seven years. I finished really? last. I finished last seven. I mean, these are some of these guys are really fast. I'm the last runner behind them for seven years. So imagine finishing last three times a week for seven years. That's me. Okay. But I, can, I can walk faster than I'm a very fast walker. Well, I'm a fast walker too. But um, anyway, let's talk diet. Yeah. So I have. That's where I try to. I've tried to make sure the bad stuff's not in the house, which is is hard with every I'm not the only person who can purchase items. Yeah. So but you know, I do my oatmeal, as you know. And then mm-hmm. I have actually, you know, I'll do leftovers for lunch, but my go to sometimes is peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. <laughs> yeah, I mean you don't you're not the healthiest guy. Um, no. y'all, do, y'all do soda? No, no soda. I actually That's cut good. that out. So when I was at my heaviest, which is like not much heavier than I am now, it was like three, <laughs> three thirty-five. I um, I just stopped drinking soda, and it actually I lost like a ton of weight really quickly. Yeah, so it's awful for you. I love soda. I don't I, love it, but I do. Uh, I'll do a one soda a week. See, I don't. Mm, I, let's say two. Let's say two a week. I just try to do water, water, and and coffee. Yeah, I mean. I like juice. What was that? Coffee mug? Yeah. That's pretty cool. So it has a hole in the middle? God, yeah, it has a hole. Donut. You love donuts. If you're watching on YouTube, Don's <laughs> shown his uh, donut coffee. I mug. mean, I, I can't. someone got this for birthday or something like that. I like a good juice. You know, put a little juice with um, a seltzer, mix it up. Pineapple juice, a little flavor. Um, I'm going to get into some greens, some powdered greens. I think you mix with water to get a dose of, of fruits and vegetables. Yeah, researching those. Um, ever done Metamucil? No, isn't that when you when you can't poop? Uh, I love Metamucil. Um, it is for usually old people to help <laughs> regulate their uh, bowels, constipation, or yeah, it, I think it helps anything. So it helps with constipation, or it helps with um, preventing diarrhea. <laughs> Basically, it makes you have really good poops. It's fiber. It's a fiber supplement. And I take it every day. Uh, yeah, I take it every. Try to take it every day. It, I, helps, it helps you have really good poops. <laughs> oh, man, it was great, great. I highly recommend it. I swear by it. I travel okay. with it. Um, <laughs> Do you have like a special container? No, nah, plastic bag, oh, dude. God. I swear it you is plastic bag. You get caught in like the airport and like. Is yeah, this kind of, cocaine? Yeah, and you're like, it, no, Metamucil. I, I do often. I do often think about that if someone caught me with it, and I'm like, no, <laughs> trust me, it's not cocaine. It is try it. It's Metamucil. Um, it is. <coughs> I swear by it. It, cha- it changed my life in terms of good, full, healthy bowel movements, which affect <laughs> everything in your life. Um, it's unbelievable, game changer. <laughs> and this was brought to you by our new sponsor, Metamucil. I feel like this is going to be one of those episodes that gets us in trouble again. I don't think it's too bad. I mean, you no. ones, you brought up drug use. All right, let's go to the next topic. <laughs> yeah, I'd love for any advice. Um, you know, it's good. It's good help discussing health and fitness and diet. Um, I got to lose about 10 pounds. I got a big trip coming up. I want to be in, in swimsuit shape. Okay. 
So I you got. got I just I just rocked the dad bod, and it's yeah. I mean, you're you're pretty much giving up on life. <laughs> I mean, much. belly hanging out, eating donuts, watching Phillies. Yeah, that's, that's how we do it. I mean, you would not you just go all in and just get really fat? Because I don't want to die. <laughs> I mean, I do. I do. There is part of me. It's it's like this. I understand. I got to be healthy so I can live forever. Because that's my goal to live forever. Um, just watch but, Phillies and Flyers. Yeah, because I mean, it's gonna. I'm gonna have to live forever to what, see if the the Phillies. I mean, see the Flyers win a Stanley Cup. But um, I love donuts, you know, and I love I love sweets in general. But donuts are obviously my my go to. If you don't work out for a couple of days, do you feel bad or feel like you haven't worked out? No, but when I work out, so I hate working out. Like I mean, even even when we're going to the gym, and I know that. She's doing her stuff. I got to be there regardless. In my mind, I'm just like, oh, maybe we should do something else. Maybe this, you know what I mean? Like I'm because they have like a little area where you can work, which is I do my bike and I go over and work. But um, so I hate it. But afterwards, I always feel really good. Yeah, and I, mean, I always I mean, even sometimes the next day I feel it. So I definitely feel the benefits of it. But um, it's just. For me, it just sucks. I just, I just hate working out. I don't mind a good walk. The problem is, is it's time consuming, and you know, it would be nice to. I don't know. I mean, I guess I need to get some sort of routine going. Throw on a podcast. I mean, I love walks yeah. because of that reason. It gives you time to just listen to a podcast. Yeah, and that's probably what I need to do a little bit more. I've done that a couple of times. I need. I'm going to do that today, Ross. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If I have time. Um. I need anything else. Um. Oh, I, yeah. So you get older when you retire, you can just listen. Are you just going to watch Phillies and Flyers wherever you all retire to like every day? Probably. Yeah. I mean, what else? I mean, I, I watch I mean, I watch a lot of different sports, though. Yeah, I, I actually you know what? I mean, I watch a ton of MMA now and obviously I watch a ton of college football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, so you have something for every season because, you know, baseball, hockey, will end, hockey will still be going on when baseball starts. Yes, yes. And then even. college football, as hockey ends, college football starts, and then baseball ends, college football continues. Yeah, and then MMA is year-round. Mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah, so I always have something to watch. Um, so, so yeah. Do you think we'll be friends when you're 80 and I'm 70, <laughs> and I'm 70 whatever? Um, I, don't, I, I don't know, Ross. What do you think? I don't know. It could, be kind of, it could be kind of crazy. We'll probably still be in North Carolina. Yeah. You know, I don't. I I'm mean, not, I imagine I'll be in North Carolina. I mean, you might be school. leaving. I don't know. You might leave at some point, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is so, where my family is. All right. Yeah. Let's move on to your community service. Now, set the stage. <laughs> what happened? And then <laughs> I don't really know the story. Don was going to tell me before the podcast. Uh, and we decided we were just going to say it before the podcast. All right. So I, I don't want, I don't want to make my, is something very, very is it traffic ticket situation? Yeah. I don't want it too much because I, not that I care about telling people, it really wasn't that big of a deal. I just don't want to complicate my situation, you know. So you, you, got a, you have a minor traffic ticket, yeah, minor traffic, ticket. not that big a deal, but um, but people you know, guess what it was, <laughs> <laughs> it's very, 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 very minor. I mean, the first couple, first couple of things pop in your head is one of those, I promise you. Um, and so I have to do community service. I'm, I'm going to be vague on, on some of this, but um, so, yeah, so I'm doing um, community service. And so it's, I am a driver assistant and it's actually besides. What what's that mean? Driver assistant. So um, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't know what I can and can't say about. Probably say everything. I, don't think I know I probably trouble. can, but so there is a, there are trucks. And they go and they will pick up, they'll do pickups um, of donations. And then they'll, then, and they'll also drop off donations. So, you know, pick up from places like Walmart and some other food areas, you know, BJ's and, and even some like, you know, basically it's a lot of stuff that's about to go, about to expire sort of thing. And so there's trucks that pick those things up and then mm-hmm. they bring them to places like churches or like um, different sort of homes and all, you know, not, not, not like someone's house, but like, you know, those, um, you know, whatever it may be, those homes where people stay because of whatever's going on in their lives for different reasons. And so 
Um, I am, I'm the assistant to that driver who drives those <laughs> truck trucks or one of those trucks for 21 hours for 21 hours. Yes. Just, that's crazy. It's actually not, I mean, it's actually kind of cool, uh, to be honest. Um, and, um, same person you're assisting. So the first, so I've, so I've done, I've done it twice already and I've had the same person, which has been interesting because you know, you're, 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 you're spending the whole day with this person. So you're getting to know, cause obviously you, you know, there's a lot of time to talk while you're driving and all that sort of stuff. So you're getting to know this person. And so it's a cool experience with that. Um, and, and the person I'm work, um, I've been working with, I have no idea who I'm going to have in the future, but um, they're, you know, Raleigh, you know, born, bred families in Raleigh, all that sort of stuff. And it's like Raleigh, not like outside. So um, the suburb sort of thing, it's, you know, so that's kind of cool. Um, what if the person that you had to ride along with was like a huge Carolina recruiting fan? Well, they're not. And he'd so, be like, I struck gold. I get Don Callahan in my car for 10 hours. I guess. I don't know. So, um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's just mostly we, we get these things and I'm just moving stuff into, into the truck, moving stuff out of the truck. Um, I mean, it's pretty simple, you know? So did you cut a deal to like, I've never heard of, community service for a minor traffic ticket like i got a speeding ticket over new year's and i paid for a lawyer uh-huh. and i paid the court case stuff I yes mean, sucks, this but... is this is where i don't know how much i can <laughs> how much i can say or, okay. or, or should want to say um community service is usually like when you like bad news bears like <laughs> instead of jail time do 100 hours of community service yeah um <laughs> As Don wears a orange shirt. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, no, it's been it's been it's actually been a um, enlightening experience for for a lot of different reasons. You see a lot of different things, um, and you see a lot meet a lot of different people, and um, you know it's but it's been you know I'll, I hang out on a truck for a couple of hours. <laughs> what if a new What if some news broke? Like a, a commitment or something. So the. They're they're really kind of cool about things. Obviously, I have obligations I got to do with them, and and so I I uphold those. But I mean, I've I've taken phone calls and stuff like that because you know, yeah, you have and to. yeah, and so it, it's kind of nothing has been something. Fortunately, we're in February. It's a dead period. It's probably the best time to do it. Yeah, I don't. I can't imagine off the top of my head other than like a like the holiday break there being a better time. Actually, holiday break actually definitely worse because that's when all the commitments happen with the transfer portal guys. So this is probably the most deadest you're going to get in the recruiting mm-hmm. calendar. So, but I've taken calls and stuff like that, and 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 done uh, done what I've needed to do. And um, like I said, I'll double up with my work today. Um, you know, because you have community service tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine like something happening. Like, man, we missed that commitment. Don, where were you? Oh, I was <laughs> on a truck delivering, you know, ten day old bananas from Walmart to the, you know. <laughs> All right, good stuff. Anything else, Don? No, no. Um, yeah, not much. All right, let's get out of here, guys. We appreciate you listening. Johnny T shirt and Johnny T shirt dot com. Remember to rate, review, and subscribe on the Inside Carolina podcast wherever you get your podcast: Spotify, Apple. Uh, If you're watching on YouTube, thank you. And those who don't, check us out on YouTube. Subscribe to Inside Carolina's YouTube page. John Bowman is doing a great job building that page. All our podcasts go on there. A lot are live on there. In addition to all our interviews um, with players and coaches and little features and all the good stuff. Um, Some some YouTube-only shows as well on Inside Carolina's YouTube page. Check that out. And we want to give a shout-out to John Siegley for producing um, this podcast, producing all the Inside Carolina podcast. Appreciate y'all listening. Oh, and next week or two weeks from now, UNC general manager Pat Suttis, oh, yes. big, big time interview. Probably go thirty minutes with him. That'll probably be the gist of that show. Thanks, guys. <laughs>